Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In today's course, we are going to see another inflectional category. It is case. So as we have done for the other types of inflectional categories, namely number, gender, and person, we defined them and we explained how each one is distinguished from the other. Today we are going to see case. We will define it first and then we will see different types of a case that exist in English. So the types of cases that we are going to see are the nominative case, the accusative case, the dative case, and the genitive case. <clears throat> Concerning, I'm sorry, the definition of case, case is a category used in the analysis of word classes to identify the syntactic relationship between words in a sentence. More specifically, the relationship between the verb and its arguments, or the relationship between a noun and a preposition. Because as you know, every verb has arguments, external arguments and internal arguments. By external arguments, we mean the subject. By the internal arguments, we mean the object, whether it is direct object or indirect object or any kind of complement. For prepositions, all the prepositions have a noun phrase which is assigned an accusative case. In standard Arabic grammar, cases are based on variations in the morphological forms of the word. And the types of cases that exist also in Arabic are the nominative case, the accusative case, the dative case, the genitive case. What they mean in Arabic for the nominative case it's the uh, case or, which is called rafa. The accusative case is marked by a nasb. The dative case is also marked by a nasb. And the genitive case is marked by al jar. In English, case is not morphologically realized, like in Arabic, on nouns, but it is recognized in three different structural situations. First, by positional relations, meaning word order, we know the case assigned to a noun phrase from the position it occupies in a sentence. So if the noun phrase comes before the verb, so automatically it is a subject and it has a nominative case. If the noun phrase comes after the verb, so it must be an object or a complement and it has an accusative case, and so on. Or another situation in which we know case in English by, by uh, or, or following a preposition, when a noun comes after a preposition, like uh, with a man to a man, for a man, by a man, and so on. Concerning the third situation in which we find case in English is the one in which we have the apostrophe and s so by a man it is manifested by constructions like teacher and teachers john and john's boy and boys okay uh, now we move to explaining each kind of cases that uh, exist in english and we start by the nominative case the nominative case abbreviated as nom or it is also called subjective case, is one of the grammatical cases which generally marks the subject of a verb, the predicate nominative or the predicate adjective. And I'm sure you are familiar with what is a predicate nominative and what is a predicate adjective. You have seen this in the course of grammar three, as opposed to its object or other verb arguments. So the nominative case is uh, always assigned to the subject or 
to the predicate nominative or predicate adjective. I give an example of predicate nominative when you say John is a doctor. Okay, a doctor here is a predicate nominative. When you say John is intelligent, intelligent here is a predicate adjective. Take this example. We made our dinner. We is a subject pronoun. So we say it is assigned a nominative case. And we will see that uh, the pronouns uh, are assigned nominative case when, uh, when they are in the subject position. And they are assigned accusative case when they are in the object position. And their form changes. So we here as a subject pronoun will become us when it is an object pronoun. Now we move to the accusative case. The accusative case refers to the case used for a noun or a pronoun that is in a direct object of a verb, in a direct object position of a verb. So I, I, I repeat, it is assigned to a noun which, is, which functions as the direct object, direct object of a verb. Here are some examples of the accusative case with an explanation of how to find the direct object. So when you say John invited his friends, if you want to know how to find the direct object, you just ask the question, John invited whom? Or John did what? Okay, what comes after the verb is the direct object. So as you can see, in A, the direct object is the pronoun, is the noun phrase, his friends. In B, the direct object is the pronoun, them. Both of them are assigned the accusative case. But notice that nouns do not change their forms in the accusative case. However, the pronouns do inflect for the accusative case. So you have them, which is an object pronoun. Okay, it is derived from they, which is a subject pronoun. Another type of case in English is the dative case. The dative case shows the relationship of an indirect object to a verb. An indirect object is the recipient of a direct object. So the accusative case, pay attention, is assigned to the direct object. The dative case is assigned to the indirect object. Here are some examples of the dative case with an explanation of how to find the indirect object. When you have an example like, she gave the postman a letter. She gave the postman a letter. You have the verb gave, okay? After the verb gave, you have the postman. The postman is the indirect object. And the letter is the direct object. Why? Because when you ask the question, what? She gave what? She gave a letter. So a letter is the direct object. To whom or for whom? Okay, who is the recipient? It is the postman. So the postman is the indirect object. So the postman is assigned the dative case. A letter is assigned, the, okay? The, the accusative case. Therefore, the direct object is a letter. The recipient of the direct object is the postman. So the NP, the postman, is assigned the dative case, and the NP, a letter, is assigned the accusative case. Notice again that nouns do not change their forms in the dative case. However, some pronouns do, because you can say, she gave him a letter. She gave him a letter. Him, in this case, is assigned the dative case. The last type of case that exists in English is the genitive case. The genitive case is, uh, is predominantly used for showing possession. With nouns, it is usually created by adding an apostrophe and s to the word or by preceding it with of. You can say, you can say John's car or the car of John. So the genitive case 
is also called sometimes possessive case. The two terms are interchangeable. However, some grammarians like to make a distinction between the two. For example, when you say John's car, some grammarians would argue that this is the possessive case, but not the genitive case. Why? Because you say it is the car of John. So here you speak about a possession. The car of John, it's a possession. So in this case, you have to say this is a kind of possessive case. But when you say children's songs, children's songs, this is not about possession. It's about songs for children, songs for children. For this reason, some argue that this is the genitive case and not the possessive case. So in the previous slides, we have defined the category of case and we have explained the different types of case that exist in English, namely nominative case, accusative case, genitive case, and dative case. In the next recording, we will explain more inflectional categories and we will focus the attention on the categories of tense, aspect, and mood. Thank you and see you then.